Welcome, guys, to the last interview of the Messenger Marketing Mastery Summit. And I thought we were just going to be talking about emojis and chatbots, but we are actually going to be talking about a much bigger mission today and how chatbots and how you creating an engaging chatbot that retains your users, how that can actually give uh, education to, uh, to the less fortunate. And uh, we're here with Deborah Kay. So thank you so much for spending your morning with us, Deborah. I appreciate you hanging out. Yeah, glad to be here. So I have always, I put out a feeler and there was a couple of people who uh, I had, you know, previous relationships or connections with um, on the summit. And then there were some people who they just said, you need to reach out to these people and, and you need to have them on the summit. And you were actually one of those people and chat fuelers all around, uh, you know, were, were hailing about Deborah and specifically your emoji bot. And uh, it's something that we'll get into in a little bit. But I'm, I'm, I'm very curious, I, I always ask people at the beginning of these uh, interviews how it is that they got into you know, chatbots and how it is that they got into messenger marketing because uh, although uh, a lot of times people take these weird kind of routes to get here and you mentioned that messenger marketing is um, only 10% of your yeah, kind of what you do. And in the past, you've you know, uh, all oh, clients uh, raised seventy-five thousand uh, dollars for the pencil promise that we talked about. So, catch us up to kind of how you got here and, and fill us in on, on where chatbots and kind of messenger marketing plays a role. Yeah, so I started. So this all started when I um, got active on Twitter about two years ago, and I was building Twitter bots. I, I was building a lot of Twitter bots. So I have about seventeen Twitter bots right now, um, and so I've always been kind of fascinated by how you can automate things, right? So on Twitter, you can have bots that follow people, that like people, or that tweet certain stuff. So you there, there are all these like algorithms, different algorithms you can uh, train your Twitter bot to uh to use um but two years ago there wasn't any natural language kind of processing uh tools out there so you know it was it was hard to build a twitter bot that could have a conversation so you know it was probably about a year or maybe a year and a half ago when chat fuel launched um and uh, again at that time you couldn't build a very sophisticated chat bot so about six months ago um because i was trying to build a chat bot for um you know this lipstick startup that 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 i work with um i started playing around with chat fuel and then learning more about how you can build more sophisticated bots right so the first iteration wasn't a very smart one but gradually over time we've managed to um, improve the capabilities of the bot uh, and get people to talk to it for a longer time and get get it to understand more things that people say so that's kind of how, how i started it started with twitter and then it moved on to facebook messenger I feel like such a newbie because all the people who I had on here have been building bots since, you know, the AIM days. And uh, I just hopped on when, uh, you know, when Chatfield came along. So this is this is great that you guys are uh, are making me grow up very quickly. So, um, yeah, so I, I tried building like a AIML, right? The, is that what you mean? AI on Pandora's bot? And it was just uh, it was too complicated for me at the time. I wasn't smart <laughs> enough to do that. <laughs> I, I stick to what I, I'm a marketer at, at, uh, at heart, and um, I have been fortunate enough to, since the bots, you know, have become what I focus on to connect with more developers and programmers who uh, have really just uh, ele elevated my thinking as, as to what's possible and elevated my thinking as to how we can help uh, people, both businesses and consumers as well. So let's, let's get into a couple of things here, and uh, I'm curious who's Who's on? We've got a, a few people who are on, so let me know if you guys are here on live. And I'm curious if you guys, um, if you guys actually want an emoji bot. So one thing that we're going to do is Deborah. She actually has a a a kind of well, it's an agent, right? It's kind of the easy, but it's it's essentially a chatbot system that responds to over fi to 1,500 emojis, right? You can send 15, you know, over 1,500 or 1,500 different emojis to it. And it will be able to respond back individually to those. And uh, it's actually how she's been able to um, raise money for Pencils of Promise. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. If you guys Sorry. Want... Say that again. Sorry, I need to mute this. Uh, I'm just trying to watch Facebook Live while we do oh, this. Sure. So I just need to mute that. All right. No, you're, you're totally good. I want to tee up and, and kind of uh, let people know how awesome this uh, this this bot is. And we'll, we'll talk about it in a bit. But 
as a quick engagement plug, if you guys want free access to that bot, she asked if you uh, want the bot that you just donate to Pencils of Promise. Uh, but if you want free access to it and you're not in a position to be able to donate uh, your money, you can donate your engagement and uh, you can hit that share button. And we're going to pick someone at the end to give a free emoji bot that can respond to over 1,500 emojis um, individually. So, Deborah, how did this emoji bot come about? And can you talk about, you know, you, you've actually raised over $75,000 for Pencils of Promise and uh, built three schools for children who uh, who need, you know, desperately need education. Tell us about this emoji bot and then tell us how it kind of plays into to this Pencils of Promise uh, nonprofit. Yeah, sure. So um, um, emoji bot started, um, uh, started because uh, I found that there were a lot of users sending emojis and stickers to my bot and my bot couldn't respond to it. So it was a pain point that I was feeling for myself. And I actually, you know, went out and like thought really hard about how to create a solution for that. Okay. Um, and in the first round, in the first iteration of emoji bot, like if you send a smiley face emoji, uh, the bot will return you with the exact same emoji. Uh, so it could respond to all 15, uh, 1500 emojis but users weren't very engaged. So they didn't really like that very much. Um, so in the second iteration, which is why it's called EmojiBot 2.0, uh, if you, if you uh, send a, an apple to the bot, it will reply with a banana. So it will return a different, but a related emoji. And that is far more engaging. So, you know, I have people that talk to the bot for six hours and all they do is send emojis. And then they, they're, they're just like amazed at the response that comes back, right? Um, with the stickers, this was also something that I, you know, a pain point that I really wanted to, um, to solve because data from Dashbot shows that 10% um, of what people send to messenger bots are stickers. Um, you know, and, and it was a pain point that uh, a lot of chat few people could not uh, could not solve. Uh, and, and the reason is because the URLs are, di are, are dynamic. So, you know, and the URL changes depending on your location and depending on who you are. So your user ID. So, you, you know, it, you, you can't use Chatfuel's AI to train a bot to respond to the stickers. And then the solution that I have found to that is, um, is, uh, each of these stickers have like a unique identifier in the middle of the URL. So you can, you can actually use dialogue flow to ignore the first part and the last part of the URL, but only recognize the unique identifier. Are you guys hearing this? This is, this is genius level stuff right here. And Deborah, while you were talking, <laughs> I pulled up your emoji bot on the screen here. And uh, what's cool guys is that you guys can fire back any emoji that, and it'll respond back with, with an equal, it's just so funny that the, the ones that it chooses to respond back with. So guys, comment an emoji. I don't know where my phone is. I'm, I'm such a dunce. I have zero clue where my phone is. So I can't see totally everything, but I'll be able to check the comments um, on, uh, on my screen here on my desktop. So, so Deborah, what, what you can try the... sending stickers, stickers, and like the blue thumbs up as well. Um, and, and yeah, so it, it like this one, I can do this. Yeah. Wow. Oh, my wife's amazing. She brought No, no, I'm stalling. Ah, I didn't like your blue thumb. It, it responds to like six different versions of the blue thumb. Uh, and it responds to like most stickers as well. Let's see if I can. Uh, so when you say stickers, what stickers are we talking about here? Oh, there's stickers in, I see. So there's actually there's like uh, like the Facebook stickers, like these. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And it responds to the most common ones, so it doesn't respond to all of them. Uh, but yeah, it usually if it's like a happy sticker, it would respond with like a related happy sticker. If it's like an unhappy sticker, it would tend to, uh, you know, I try to train it to respond with an unhappy sticker because, you know, these stickers and these emojis are contextual, right? They, mm -hmm. they, convey, they convey the emotion of the user at the time. So you, you do want to respond with something that uh, acknowledges the sentiment. 
how this is just this is so fun, right? And so I'm I'm curious here, Deborah, how how you built this, and one of the things that you wanted to to kind of get into was how to utilize and how to leverage this for user engagement, right? Because you talked about it, how even at the beginning. Uh, it just wasn't as engaging, but by adding more, more emojis, more responses, it made it more engaging. What is that? Why does that matter? And why does building more elaborate bots and, and more capable bots, why does that matter for businesses and brands? Like, why is that something that you feel passionate about? Yeah, um, you know, with the first iteration of the emoji bot, where it just returns the identical emoji, um, what you, you know, people would send two or three and then realize that they are getting exactly what they send to the bot. So that's not terribly engaging. That's not terribly entertaining. And then they will just leave. So that affects, you know, your retention rate of the bot, right? And retention is, you know, one of the biggest uh, uh, pain points or problems that I see with bots right now as well. So again, using data that um, Dashbot provided, um, you know, the average retention of a messenger bot after three months is only 9%. So that means that 90% of your users are not talking mm -hmm. to your bot anymore after three months. Wow, what an interesting uh, stat there. And I'm, I was building out um, a, a bot before we hopped on this call for a, a client of ours, and he had a regular PDF, you know, a, a just kind yeah. of a generic PDF. And what I was thinking about was, well, how can we take the elements of that PDF? How can we take the elements of those videos and then create something that is, uh, is a lot more engaging? And um, so that's kind of what you're talking about is taking these basic conversational elements and to actually automate the, you know, the responses so that the user sticks around. So yeah. that the user is, is still there uh, engaging and, and ultimately buying from you months later. Yeah, so when I look at statistics for my emoji bot, like people send up to 60 messages a session, uh, which is which is really high. Um, 60 uh, messages on your emoji bot? They'll go back here and just send back and forth emojis 60 times? In one session, in one session, yes. In one session, wow. You That's know, and, and, and they, can, they can spend up to, um, let me see what message, uh, four, 400, uh, 400 seconds uh, per session. 400 seconds, 400 that's divided by 60. That's like- That's six. like eight minutes. That's, you know, that's, yeah. a, that's a pretty long time for someone to be chatting to a, a chatbot. Right, because, you know, for us, what I realized with some of our clients is that they, you know, getting them to stick around for two or three engagements, you know, or I have, I have sometimes where early on in our, in our building phase where, you know, three, four days out, it was just hard to get them engaged, but because it was because we were treating it like email, we were treating it like these old kind of, you know, mediums that aren't, aren't very dynamic. Um, so this is, this is the answer essentially is, is, is being able to create dynamic responses, right? And I know we've, like yeah. one thing we've talked a lot about on this um, uh, messenger, you know, summit was was incorporating advanced capabilities. And a lot of people seem to talk about dialogue flow. That, that seems to be a, a thread with with every, all of, all of the people who are in, on the end. So why do you think that whether it's dialogue flow or even some of these other uh, platforms, why do you think that they're important for um, chatbot builders and developers, marketers to to start utilizing because I think the percentage is very very low. Yeah, so the I mean the importance of using like an NLP tool like Dialogflow is that it helps it helps your bot understand what the user is saying, right? And um, you know users do not have do not say things in one way like you can you can you, you can ask for a certain thing in like 10 or 15 different ways right uh and you, you know using a tool like dialogue flow helps you be able to respond no matter how the user has asked the question mm. um so i mean that's something that that um is recommended for for dialogue flow development as well it, it is if you have an intent, you should be programming at least 10 to 15 different ways a user can ask that question. Uh, that will make it more likely for Dialogflow to be able to handle uh, the 150 or 200 ways the user may actually ask that question using the wow. NLP 
capabilities. Wow. It's really that many, 150 to 200, like that. Oh, it could be even more. So I'm, I'm making that number up. But the, the number that you should be putting into Dialogflow is 10 to 15 ways a user can ask the question, right? So if you're building a bot on, on chat field or on, on many chat, you can only ask the question in one way. And, you know, you can only, um, you can only respond to an exact match query, right? So if the right. user says, something you can you can only set up the AI to pretty much respond to like uh, exact match keywords. Um, but with dialogue flow, you should be, you should be entering like 10 or to 15 different ways that a user can ask a question. Hmm. So, so how does someone get started? I mean, I don't know where we want to take this here. Is it, is it when, when someone is, is doing this, is it that they need to go through and actually is, is the bigger challenge for, for people that they need to map out these, 10 to 15 different questions, or is the challenge that they need to go figure out how to connect dialogue flow to chat fuel and how to, how to be able to, you know, get those platforms talking to each other. Cause I feel like there's two different animals that, that are, are happening right now with that. Yeah. So it, it is pretty straightforward too. So I, I come from a non-coding background, but I would say I'm, I'm slightly more savvy than most people, but it is pretty straightforward to connect you know, your bot to uh, Dialogflow. There are several solutions out there. Uh, Edwin uh, or Reynoso has one. Uh, Alfred has one. Um, you know, there are other solutions that you can find on the internet. Um, so connecting your bot to Dialogflow is not hard. It takes five minutes. Um, you know, if you want it, you could probably pay someone to do that for you. Training the bot to respond just to text is also not that difficult. The Dialogflow interface is um, fairly intuitive. So it's fairly obvious where you would say, uh, user says this, bot responds this. So that's pretty straightforward as well. Um, you can also use, if you, if you know a little bit of code and you know how to um, format JSON, you can also get Dialogflow to respond with quick replies or gallery buttons. Um, that is a step that I would advise uh, everyone to take because usually when the conversation gets derailed, you would want to direct the user back to something that your bot can do, right? So you would want to uh, offer some quick reply buttons to kind of redirect the user to things that your bot can do. So that kind of comes back to the emoji bot as well, right? Um, you know, I'm not saying add emoji bot to your dialogue flow agent, and then you would immediately have like a, like a, like a, a next level bot. No, you use emoji bot to, um, to trigger, uh, to be able to like continue the conversation a little bit more, but you should still find a way to, re-inject the user back into what your chatbot can do. I so love you it. should always be directing your user back to what your chatbot can do instead of, um, instead of saying, I don't understand, or I don't know. Right. So <clears throat> I want to try and wrap, cause I'm, I'm, you're melting my brain here. Deborah. This is great. So guys, what we're talking about here is, is upgrading your, your bot and, and when, when the user puts these these kind of small human like interactions for uh, that obviously here in the in the emoji bot or even on the larger scale of dialogue flow that it just allows the bot to to have a response as opposed to being limited or going into those endless loops and so for those of you guys who are hopping on late this bot this agent right is uh, you would call it an agent correct yeah that's right. This agent that you can just basically drop right into your dialogue flow or just up, I don't know what you would just put it onto it, right? Like a sticker <laughs> you would put it on and it would basically uh, allow your bot to respond to 1500 different emojis. And now it can even respond to stickers. So um, I'm curious, like I, I, I use emojis a little bit, but those of you guys who are here watching live, what emojis do you want me to test out? And if you guys want, if you guys want this emoji bot, Deborah has actually set up a Pencils of Promise site where if you donate $35, uh, she will give you this agent um, uh, to, for you. However, if you do not have $35 and you want to pay with your engagement, we will uh, award one person who shares this out. And if you're on still at the end, um, we will uh, we'll give one of those away um, for free. But if you guys have thirty-five dollars. I would encourage you guys donating to a worthy, worthy cause. Um, so, 
Deborah, where were we talking about before I, I started going on my marketing rant here? What we talk, is there is there anything that they should know about this emoji bot um, that when they like, or you gave a really great context for it. This emoji bot is not going to turn it automatically into this advanced bot automatically, but it's going to pursue the, the conversation a little bit further. Is there anything else that you feel is a great reason to have something like this built on your bot? Um, no, so that's the primary reason, uh, you know, it gives you the ability. So it, it's number one, it is the recognition that people send emojis and stickers to your bot. And number two is just giving your bot an ability to respond to basic emojis and stickers, right? Well, not even basic, it's like the entire range. So I basically scraped Emojipedia for like every emoji under the planet. And I had someone in the Philippines manually train dialogue flow. Right. And the funny thing is, like, he was using a computer that is or like a like a, a, a PC that was operating on a, a version of Windows that was so old, he couldn't even see half of the emoji. So he was literally copying a black box and then like testing it and seeing if it returned a black box and then hoping that that would be the right emoji. <laughs> Rote testing. Um, Yari has a great question. And guys, I want you guys to throw down your questions for Deborah because um, we've got uh, a few minutes here, and then we're going to award uh, someone for I'm actually going to, I'm going to be getting the emoji bot um, agent here because I realized that I am, have switched over to chat fuel. Recently, I was built on uh, many crash, but now I'm on chat fuel. So I will be putting <laughs> my dialogue flow agent up and I will be getting the emoji bot for sure. Um, yeah, so with the emoji bot, what we actually give is uh, firstly a zip file a zip file with like over uh can i, can I ask 000... a different question deborah i want to yeah. i want to give you the the, the full runway to to plug and, and i'm gonna i want to walk people through and maybe we can talk about it then but yari had a really good question that i'd like to pick your brain on and hear what your thoughts are she said if like, for like a fashion bot can someone upload an image of what they like and can the bot interpret what that image and respond based on what they uploaded is that are we there yet are those are those types of things available yeah, so you can do it, but you would need to use an integration with an image recognition API. So there are, there are tools out there. Um, you can check out a Clarify, uh, C-L-A-R-I-F-A-I. They do image recognition. So you would basically have to send the image to from Dialogflow to Clarify via the API and then have Clarify return uh, uh, a response with what that image is. This is what you're talking about? Yeah. Look, look this, Yari, this is probably, so you would need, so you would integrate dialogue flow with this and then integrate all of that with chat fuel. Yeah. That's correct. So basically, I mean, there are different solutions besides clarify. Uh, you would basically need to use an image recognition API to do that. Wow. It looks like the solution that she's asked about is, is exactly right here. <laughs> But yeah. it, so it's not even that she would have to be like, it, it wouldn't have to be like anything other than plugging in this, this, this API right here. Yeah, correct. Wow. Guys, this is why you hop on these live videos. You get answers like this. This is crazy shit we're talking about. I, I, I've learned so much on this messenger marketing uh, summit, guys. Um, if you guys have any questions, throw them down there for Deborah. We've got uh, a few questions. Uh, we got a few minutes left here. Chooks, chooks. Chuk says his challenges with dialogue flow is following up when user responds to something different when your entity is set to either yes or no. Does that make sense to you? I don't know what it, I don't know what that means. Do <laughs> you want me to re repeat the question? Um, your challenge with dialogue flow is for, I mean I'm reading it right now. Following with a user uh, when your user responds with something. So so uh, Chuck, so does that mean that um, it triggers the default fallback when that happens? Uh, because it, it didn't respond to, uh, so, so basically what you would have to do is you would have to, uh, set your default fallback to catch that situation. Right. Um, and, and typically what I do with my bot, when my bot doesn't understand, um, it, it, it never, ever says, I don't understand what you said. It definitely never, ever, ever says, I didn't understand that. Say that again, right? If your bot did not understand the first time, do not ask your users to say it again. It will not understand if your users say it again. So, uh, I definitely remove that from all of your bots. Um, 
But what I do with my default fallback is if if my lipstick bot doesn't understand, it it um it it replies with, hey, why don't we talk about lipsticks instead? And then it shows like three different quick reply buttons to different types of uh, conversations you can have with my bot on lipstick. And so I have different variations of that. Um, so basically, you know, users sometimes don't even realize that they're being shown a default fallback. So they don't even realize that the bot hasn't understood. It just sounds like the bot's trying to change the conversation. So, so Chuck, that's what I would advise you to do. Like if, if the user does not respond to a yes or a no, just make sure that your fallback um, redirects them to uh, replying with a yes or no. Either that, or you can actually use um, the ch chat fuels um, conditional logic to say if the bot did not reply, if the user did not reply with either yes or no, it will just repeat the question. So you can set up that loop such that they keep asking the question again and again and again. And you say, in order to proceed, you have to reply yes or no. And that would get um, get around that. Guys, <clears throat> this is heavy stuff here. This is, I love it. This is great. This is why we come to the live videos because you get your questions answered. Um, and, and for those of you guys, and I'm, I'm a marketer, Deborah, and you know, you're, you say that you, uh, you're you way more savvy than the average person, that's for sure. Uh, <clears throat> however, what I think is important as people are building bots, I feel I find that there's kind of these levels and um, I guess I'm gonna take this off the screen for just a second. I find that there's there's levels you know, in building a basic bot that can just deliver information. And then the second level is having the user interact and having some, some sort of responses. And I think one, like you talked about, just just being able to direct that loop, you know, just ha just not having a, a closed loop where people get stuck, or not having a, you know, like you said, an endless loop where it doesn't, or it's not gonna, you know, not gonna understand it, but but having paths for people and and knowing that the there's going to be inputs that the bot isn't going to be able to read, and and having like you said, pre-prescribed, okay, let me let me guide you back towards this way. Um, yeah, I think it's really, really valuable. Um, yeah, so guiding back to what them towards what your bot can actually do, I think it's a very important aspect of bot design. It's huge. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah. And uh and, and also that you know, with with tools like chat fuel and dialogue flow, these things get easier and easier as well. Um, yeah. so guys, if you guys have any other questions, you guys have literally have like a few minutes to throw those down there. I am actually excited about something because Deborah has been raising money for um, Pencils of Promise, and she's already raised over $75,000 and built three schools for kids in uh, in need. And if you guys don't know about Pencils of Promise, they are uh, an incredible organization that goes out and, and builds these schools in places that, uh, that frankly need it the most. And Deborah is someone who, well, well I, you shared it at the beginning, Deborah, but I'll, I'll ask you again, why do you feel you could sell this debt, you could sell this emoji bot? You could very easily make money off of it. You could put it on it, you know, put it somewhere. You can market it and make make a, a lot of money off of it. You chose to donate these funds towards this organization. Why why is it something you feel so so strongly about? Yeah, so you know, I've been a supporter of global education for a number of years now. Um, you know, I think education is the one thing you can do to change the world. I mean, that's something that Nelson Mandela said, and I I strongly believe in it. Uh, I feel like I would not be where I am without education. And so um, it is very important to me to, it, it makes a difference to me. Uh, I sleep better at night knowing that I, I've helped people uh, have, you know, have some basic education. And the fact is like your money goes a really long way, right? With $35, like what is $35 to most people? You know, it's like a couple of Starbucks, a couple of cab rides, uh, you know, maybe it could buy you a book, maybe it could buy you like a nice new shirt, but with 35 bucks, you could put a kid through school for one whole year, right? I mean, you can't get that kind of value anywhere else. Uh, and that's kind of why I decided to, um, to support this cause. Uh, you know, I, I started off aiming to raise $25,000 for one school. I did that in a month. Uh, you know, then I committed to raising another $50,000 and I did that in another two months. Um, I, I have tips on fundraising if people are interested, uh, but that's probably for another conversation. Uh, but because of that, I, yeah, I, I realized that, you know, it, it's, it's not hard to do. You just have to commit 
to the cause. Uh, and so now what I do is I teach children how to do it. Um, I've taught several kids uh, and I encourage them to give up their birthday presents in exchange for uh, donations so that they can help other children in uh, less developed countries. I think that's really important. So I teach them how to build a, a website. I teach them how to write about why they're supporting the cause. And then I teach them how to write fundraising emails. Um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much what I, I do with Pencils of Promise right now. So, you know, when I, when I set up Emoji Board, I did think about whether or not I should charge this and make it a commercial thing. But honestly, I, you know, to me, there's more impact if you, uh, if, if I use this and uh, I was able to help uh, global education as well. So uh, anybody that wants to donate, you're not only getting, uh, you know, 1,500 intents for your agent, you will also be putting a kid through school for one year. I mean, just for the emoji bot is so helpful. So this is, this is great. Okay. And so you actually wrote a post about it. Yeah. Um, which is, uh, which is up here. This is really cool. I love this. So this, this is, and then, and then I, I would ultimately, I need, I go back. I, here's the pencil promise, right? Help walk me through here. What's, what's honorees. What is, what is this? Or yeah. So that's, that's just who you want to dedicate the donation to. So if you wanted to dedicate a donation to someone else, you could uh, put it in there. Got it. Okay. So let's do that. Uh, Leave a comment. All right, that's not the name. So guys, here's what we're gonna do, okay? <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead here and I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get uh, get in on this. Um, what I'm gonna ask is that if you guys want to get the emoji bot, I'm gonna throw the the link into the description here so that you guys can uh, can grab that as well. But um, I'll throw the link of the uh, both of those into uh, into the comments here so that you guys can um, get access to the emoji bot and then also access to the fundraiser as well. And um, what I ask is that if you guys have thirty five dollars that you guys go out there and um, you know help someone go through school. And if you guys uh, don't, that that's okay. I've, I've honestly I've been in those places, so we just ask that if you if that's the case, that you just uh, share with your uh, your community, and uh, we'll pick one lucky person to uh, to get the emoji bot for free. So you can get the emoji bot there. I'm gonna put that in the link. And um, is there anything I'm missing, Deborah? I mean, you, you mentioned that the process is is pretty plug and play, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's pretty plug and play. All you have to do is, you know, press the import button and it will import all the agents into your emoji. I, you know, uh, when I send it to you, it actually comes with like very detailed instructions on how to do it with screenshots. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, nobody has come back to say, hey, that hasn't worked yet. So it's, uh, it's worked for everyone. What you also get is, is my Google Sheet. So you can actually see um, which emojis I have mapped to, uh, to uh, which other emojis. And then I will also send a link to a tool that you can use to uh, train your Dialogflow agent uh, using Google Sheets. So basically, if you follow the format that I've given you, you can basically upload in bulk um, uh, any responses, uh, any intents uh, from Google Sheets directly into Dialogflow. So that's a pretty useful tool as well. So uh, the different applications of that is that if you don't like the response that I have programmed for my emoji bot, you can change it and then up, re-upload the whole thing. Uh, if you, you know, I have a different version of this, uh, which allows you to see all the small talk modules in Dialogflow. You can customize that and upload all of that as well. Uh, yeah, basically you can upload any intent with this tool. So it's very useful if you are building a lot of intents with a lot of responses. This is, uh, this is so helpful. And what I, what I love about it, Deborah, is that you've made it really easy for people to, um, to get access to it and, yeah. and set up. And, and like I said, you could very easily have decided to, um, you know, to make money off this, but, uh, but you're not. And uh, I want to make sure, let's see here if this is working. I think I remember my credit card number by heart that's the that's the sign of a uh of a true um 
<laughs> of a true. You should use a password manager. Shop, shop. You're not gonna type your card number in for everyone to see, are you? <laughs> no, no, no. I've got, uh, I've got uh, my 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 screen. Can you see mine? I don't think they can't see mine right now, which is great. Can you see mine? Uh, yes, they can. Yes, I can. You can see what's going on right now. Uh, yes, we can. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm on Facebook. I'm looking at you. Um... But I, you can't see my you can't see my detail right now. <laughs> can you? No. I can see you on the donate page. Oh yeah, but I'm actually typing my card in right now on my screen. I've got it. All right. I've got okay. Yeah, yeah, I can't see that. Yeah, I've got the screen sharing paused right right before the good part. See, this is this is the marketer in me. When they when the, all the the scammers are stopping by, they're gonna think that they're gonna catch this uh, the good part, but they're not. So that's okay. But I want to make sure that I'm I'm trying this whole stick to your word thing. You know, it's kind of interesting, but uh, you know, kind of the follow through has been. Um, I don't know what's going on here. All right, guys, I'm gonna have to go. If my wife is, oh, maybe I have my card right here. Do I have my card? I don't have my card. This is this is what why you should be prepared for these things, guys. Um, I wanted to let you guys know if you guys go in and uh, let's just refresh here. Let me understand. Um, if you guys go in and donate thirty-five dollars, you guys will get the uh, emoji bot for free. So that's kind of cool. You guys get to give and put someone through school, and then she's going to give you the emoji bot as a as a way of saying thank you. So I would encourage you guys to go out and do that. And uh, if you guys have questions, throw them down there. Um, let's see. I don't know. I think we answered all the questions down here, Deborah. I I just can't thank you enough for for doing this and for um, you know just making a bigger impact. I, I think that that's what I love about a lot of people in this bot community is that they seem to have a bigger a bigger reason and a bigger purpose for things. So um, it's uh, it's very refreshing to get a chance to see you uh, in the middle of it and be a part of it as well. So I really appreciate that. Great. Um, guys, go follow Deborah. And um, do you, do they, should they follow you or is the best place to just go is to test out that emoji bot? And, yeah, just uh, test out the emoji bot. The instructions are all there. You are free to ping me on Messenger as well. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So get in touch. There are a million ways you can get in touch with me. All easy. I love it. All right, guys, have an amazing weekend. This officially concludes the Messenger Marketing Mastery Summit. Hope it was great. You'll see lots of clips of this stuff coming out soon. So great. see you later.